Hello, I'm Lance Sorrell, Chief Development Officer at Premier Travel Media, and today we're going to be running you through a brief primer on content marketing. So our journey today. Content marketing as a term uh, is used in many different ways, and there's many different definitions that people have. So we're going to start with a warm-up to make sure that we're all on the same page with the proper definition. We're also going to look through some historical uh, percentages and statistics to understand why you really need to be in content marketing and why we have to move through the steps in the way we're doing it. Then we're going to jump into uh, working on your editorial mission statement, your content marketing plan, move over to mistakes to avoid when creating content, and wrap up uh, when talking about repurposing content. So first things first, you're doing it wrong. That's not a knock against you. Um, if you look at the numbers here, no matter if you've been in it for a while or if you are just starting, the, you have a high likelihood of doing at least part of this wrong. Only 30% of people say their company is effective at content marketing. Only 44% can claim that they know what an effective or successful content marketing program looks like. Only 32% have a documented strategy. <clears throat> and only 28% actually have an editorial mission statement. It's crazy. However, over 76% say that they will produce more content this year, with over half saying they're going to increase their content marketing budget this year. So it's no surprise that well over half again say that their biggest challenge in content marketing is measuring ROI. If you look at these numbers, half the people don't know what they're doing, but yet three quarters or more are going to do more of it. When I look at these numbers and others, one quote pops to mind, and I stole this quote from Big Data, but it does apply as well to content marketing. Content marketing is like teenage sex. Everyone talks about it. Nobody really knows how to do it. Everyone thinks everyone else is doing it. So everyone claims that they're doing it. Okay? So what we're going to be doing here is making sure that everyone knows how to do it, or at least how to start, and basically give you those steps to move forward. So the first thing we need to talk about is what is it? We need a definition. Content marketing is a strategic marketing approach focused on creating and distributing valuable, relevant, and consistent contact to attract and retain a clearly defined audience and ultimately to drive profitable customer action. Now this is very different in a lot of ways from traditional marketing that most people are used to in that traditional marketing tends to focus on the message they want to get out. Where content marketing, most of the time, focuses on producing valuable and relevant content that your reader, your potential customer, wants to read. Not necessarily what you're trying to sell or your sales or marketing message. So the tip here is that you need to find a balance between what your audience wants to read and what you want to write, what that message is you want to write. Why you need it, okay? Customers have shut off the world of traditional marketing. They have DVRs, Xboxes, where they can record television and skip TV commercials. They use services that for online ad blockers, to block online banners, Google advertisements, etc. Uh, the chart on the right here shows you the increase from 2010 through 2014 of people who are using online ad blockers. It's up somewhere around 151 million people now use these types of services. That means if they come to your website or go to another website and that site has banners on it, Google advertisements on it, they will never see them. They just simply don't exist for those people. And if you look at the chart, this is not a slowing, slowing down trend. This is an accelerating trend. This is where content marketing comes into play. You are going to produce valuable and relevant content that 
will engage your reader in a consumable, in a way that they want to consume that content and ultimately drive them towards that customer action that you want. Okay, how to get started. Your editorial mission statement. This is why you exist. If you are producing content right now and you do not have a documented editorial mission statement, stop. And I mean that. Stop producing content. Pick up the phone. Tell your writers to stop. Because more than likely, you are wasting your time, your effort, and your resources. Okay? So, four questions to ask yourself when you are writing your editorial mission statement. Who are you as a company? Who are you trying to reach? How are you going to reach them? And what do you want to accomplish when you do? Okay? Write these down. Pass it around the office. Make sure you get a good definition for each of these. Then, as you actually sit down to draft your statement, three things that you should include are your core audience target. Who are you helping most with your content? Okay, who are you trying to reach? The deliverables to your audience. What will you provide through that content? And third, what is the desired outcome for your audience? What's in it for them? Why, why should they be reading your content or sharing your content at all? Here's a real world example. Welcome to Inc.com, the place where entrepreneurs and business owners can find useful information, advice, insights, resources, and inspiration for running and growing their business. Boom. In that statement, you've got all three. Your audience, what you're delivering, and that desired outcome. This is right on their site, as yours should be too. You'll notice that this is very different than your company statement, your company mission statement. This is just for your editorial. Okay, it's very different. The tip here is that the reason you want to develop this is because it not only helps you understand what articles to say yes to, what content to say yes to, but it also tells you what you can say no to. You more than likely have a lot of intelligent people in your company. They're very creative. They're coming up all the time with these great articles. Oh, we should write about this. and Oh, we should write about that. But you shouldn't write about them all. You take those ideas, you hold them up against this editorial mission statement, and you use it as a litmus test. If it passes, then you write about it. If it doesn't, you say, this is a great idea, but it doesn't fit with our mission statement. We're not going to spend the resources to write about it. Okay. Okay. So now you have your editorial mission statement. The next step is developing your content marketing plan. This is the plan you are going to use for every single piece of content that comes out, that you produce. Some eight, eight critical pieces that you need to consider when developing this. Research your competitors, your target audiences, and your overall marketplace. Know where you're stepping into, who you're going to find there, and who you're coming up against. Understand your customer journey. Understanding what a cus your customer journey is is critical to, to the entire process. It will determine where you're promoting your content, where you're pushing it out, what types of content you're producing, okay, what message you're, you're using at those various stages. If you don't understand or don't know your customer journey, you should definitely research that um, because it influences not just this, but your entire sales process. Create a unique story. If what you're producing and the story of your company or your destination or your whatever it happens to be is a rubber stamp of other similar companies or other similar destinations, okay, don't write it. Take that information and twist it and add a unique angle so what you're producing is a unique story that will make people want to read your story over everyone else's. Okay. Create art. Produce, produce the creative. Okay, this is a critical step. One of the things I've noticed is that when people submit print advertising pieces to us. They've obviously spent a lot of time and effort and money to develop a beautiful design and 
and go through the entire creative process. But those same companies will send over um, online marketing materials, content marketing materials, and you can see they've given almost little or no thought to the photos, the videos, the creatives that go along with it. And they are critical. Most of the time, people will see the title of your article and one main image before they decide if they're going to click and consume that story. And that's in social media, that's in newsletters, that's on your website, that's everywhere. So spend the time to gather good photos, create good creatives, and you'll have a much more productive content marketing plan. Promotion and distribution through diversified channels. Again, this goes back to your customer journey. You shouldn't be publishing every piece of content in only one location every time. Depending upon who you're trying to reach, where you're trying to reach them, and when in the customer journey you are trying to reach them depends on where you're going to promote and distribute the content you've created. Create conversation when possible. Okay, this is also very critical. If you're publishing something on social media, let's say you put out a tweet for an article. If the next time you come to Twitter is when you're again going to post something else, you're doing social media wrong. Okay, you should be watching those tweets, all of those Facebook posts, and when someone shares or likes or retweets or comments on any of those pieces, you need to go back and respond to that. Whether it's a simple thank you or commenting on something of theirs, Social media is social. You need to create a conversation. When you do that, you're building the relationship you have with your audience and with your potential customers. Measure, 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 okay? Use the analytics that come with all of these different things, whether they're Google Analytics, social media analytics, whatever they happen to be, to see what's working and what's not. Okay, because you're going to need those numbers for the final piece of your marketing plan. And that's setting a review date. All right, when you write all this up and you document it, and you will document it because that's a critical piece and you're all gonna sign off on it, the last thing you should put in there is a review date. We're gonna come back eight months from now. We're gonna come back 10 months from now and pull all this together, look at what worked, looked at what didn't, and use that information to modify your content marketing plan for your next year, for your next time period. Okay, let's jump over now to individual pieces of content. All right, here's 10 mistakes to avoid when creating content. Bloated content, All right? A piece of content should only be as long as it needs to be. If that's 400 words, great. If that's 3,000 words, great, but don't turn a 400 word piece into a 3,000 word piece because you feel like you need a 3,000 word piece. Okay? It's going to be boring. People aren't going to read it. It's going to have the opposite effect of what you want. So only make the content as long as it needs to be. Pedantic content. Okay? This is also very critical. Don't talk down to your audience. Don't use flowery, esoteric language. Okay? Speak to them on their level. When you try to speak down to them or speak above them, most people interpret that as you're trying to hide something behind all this flowery language so that they won't understand. Okay? In other words, don't call a banana an elongated yellow fruit. Simple enough. Keyword stuffing. By all means, organize and write your content around SEO and keywords. It's awesome. It's critical. You should be doing it. But if your content sounds something like content marketers find that they are more effective at content marketing when they have effective content marketing resources with which to content market, okay? That's keyword stuffing. Don't do it. You're not fooling your readers. You're not fooling Google. It's going to have the opposite effect of what you want. Deceptive content. Here, I promised you 10 mistakes to avoid when creating content. If I delivered you eight, that's deceptive content. If I say I'm going to give you 10 mistakes to avoid when creating content, and I talk about how to treat a third degree burn, 
that's deceptive content. If I say I'm going to give you a 15-page white paper, and I give you a 10-page white paper, that's deceptive content. Don't do it. You will lose the trust of your audience, and they will not come back. Always answer the question you say you're going to answer. Always fulfill the promises that you say you're going to fulfill. Abusing hashtags and links. Okay. By all means, again, it's very important to link your content to internal and external sources that are related. But don't abuse it. Don't put a dozen, two dozen, three dozen links in a piece of content. First of all, it makes it extremely difficult to read. And again, you're going to have the opposite effect you want when it comes to SEO. Hashtags. Many people still don't quite get hashtags, how they work. Put very simply, hashtags are used to organize online content. Okay. So if I follow a hashtag that's, for example, sea kayaking, Every time someone posts a piece of content with that hashtag, I am very likely to see it. Great. But if you are writing about canopy tours in Ecuador and you use the hashtag for sea kayaking because you know a lot of people follow it, that's abusing hashtags and you're going to, again, have the opposite effect you want. There's going to be a huge backlash of those people in that community that are following that hashtag. And you're also going to lose out on SEO and all those other things. So don't abuse them. Use them, don't abuse them. Regurgitating common sense. All right, if you're writing about how to cross the street without getting hit by a car, don't write it. Okay, that's an oversimplified example, but if you're writing about your destination or tours or whatever in general, and what you're writing about is common sense, don't write it. Okay, just, just, just don't write it. Find something else to write about. Because people aren't going to read it. Unrelatable content. We talked earlier about having a clearly defined audience. So if your clearly defined audience is, let's say, uh, women in 60 years and older in the Midwest, your content shouldn't reference Justin Bieber. Okay, they're not going to know who that is. It's not going to be relatable. So make sure that you are speaking to your clearly defined audience. It's okay to have multiple audiences, but write and produce separate content for each of those audiences. Don't try to write one piece to fit all audiences. Failing to be solution oriented. You are not Wikipedia. Don't try to be Wikipedia. Do not write purely informational articles. Not only are they kind of boring, um, but again, no one is going to read them because most people are looking for solutions. They're asking questions. They want to find answers. Take that information and rework it so that you are using it to answer a question, to solve a reader problem, to solve an issue that they may have. Okay. Not only will your reader like you more, but search engines will like you more because they are looking for that type of content. Not providing examples. Use case studies, use references, use examples every time you can, okay? No matter how much your audience trusts or doesn't trust you, it is always good to provide examples to illustrate what you're trying to talk about instead of forcing your reader to actually do it on, on their own. And again, lastly, not aligning with your content plan, okay? Again, take a piece of content, hold it up against your editorial mission statement, and if it doesn't match, don't write it. Okay, last topic. This sounds like a lot of work, right? Going through the editorial mission statement, content plans, thinking about what you need to avoid and what you need to include in each piece of content. It is a lot of work. It is. But it's also highly effective and nothing worth doing is ever easy, right? But there are a few tips, a few ways that you can kind of ease that burden off yourself. And one is repurposing content. If the content you produce is evergreen, okay, it's not gonna go out of style, it's not gonna go out of date for a good amount of time, it's a good piece of cornerstone content, you can repurpose that content to decrease the production time future content. 
And you'll also reach new audiences because people will consume the same information in different ways. Okay, so let's walk through a couple. Make a presentation. Where do you think this presentation came from? I have a column on ptmgroups.com where I post articles about SEO, web development, video marketing, content marketing, etc. When it came time to pull this presentation together, I went back to that content I had already produced, added some value to it, and repurposed that content as a presentation. Turning blog posts into guides and white papers. Again, for me, this is the next step. I'm going to take these posts and turn them into a much more comprehensive white paper. Write a guest post. I get asked to write guest posts all the time, but I don't just have to sit down at my desk with a blank piece of paper in front of me. When I need to write something on content marketing or whatever, I go back to something I've already produced. Again, rework it, add some value to it, and then repurpose it as a guest post. Create an email series. Many of the things I talked about today have numbers associated with them. Seven ways to repurpose content. Ten mistakes to avoid. Okay, I can take each of those and separate them out and create an email series. Perhaps once a week, I send you uh, an email about one new way to repurpose your content. And I expand on, on each of those ways in each one of the emails okay, to create that type of that value and that email series. Create an infograph. Many times, people like to view things in a much more visual fashion. I presented a lot of percentages, statistics, uh, at the beginning of this. I can take those and create pie charts, create bar graphs, create all those types of things to repurpose in a very graphical way. And there are many free services out there to help you do that. Host a podcast, a webinar. The disadvantage of producing a video like this is it's a one-way conversation. All right, I can't answer your questions live like I could in a podcast or like in a podcast or a webinar where I can invite you in, we could use this content, again, go through it, and we could have a live conversation. Create a video. All right. This presentation was originally a video, or originally, I'm sorry, a presentation that I did at a conference, and I've turned it, like you are listening to right now, into a video presentation. Okay. So this is just a few of the ways you can do it. There are more. Um, but this will help you ease that, that burden in creating content. And with that, I'm going to end, but I invite you to uh, email me at lance at ptmgroups.com or go by, um, our content marketing page on our website at ptmgroups.com content dash marketing. So again, I thank you for sitting through this. I hope you learned something. And if you have any questions, you can always email me uh, on the site or comment in the comment section below the video. Thank you.